Real Orange is next on PBS SoCal. Coming up, the rising cost of prescription drug abuse by young adults in Orange County. It's not the Hotel California, but the lore of this Fullerton Hotel lives on in story and spirits. A major section of carpool lanes on the 405 freeway could turn into toll lanes. And Team USA sinks the Hungarian water polo team in Newport Beach. Join us for those stories and more next on Real Orange. And thanks for joining us once again. I'm Ann Police. And I'm Ed Arnold. Coming up on this edition of Real Orange, the epidemic of prescription drug abuse among young adults in Orange County. And we have an assortment of cats and dogs up for adoption from the Orange County Animal Care. Charles Clark Chapman moved to Fullerton in 1899, and his agricultural legacy earned him the title Father of the Valencia Orange. But Chapman's interests also included mining, oil, and real estate. In the segment of Forgotten OC, local historian Chris Epstein shows Maria Hall Brown around one of Chapman's properties, the California Hotel, a hidden treasure holding onto its original charm, if not its original purpose. So now you're going to pick on me because I said I was going to start singing. Well, it's not the Hotel California. It was. The Welcome California. to the California Hotel. It wouldn't have worked. Not the same meter. No, it's not the same. But we, we are coming into what was once the California Hotel, built 90 years ago this year here in Fullerton in 1922. And uh, it was this really beautiful Spanish style uh, hotel that was still here in the 60s. It stopped being a hotel and became more this kind of compendium of restaurants and shops and things like that. But it's got a lot of great history and I don't think everybody who passes by would have any are. clue. You know, today it's called the Villa del Sol. This it's, is the courtyard. This is gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's very serene and, and still very, uh, very peaceful. But you know, back in the day, 70, 80, 90 years ago, it was a very happening Orange County hotel. And there's some there's some cool stories here too. I love okay. the fact that it still says the California up there. Oh, kind of a nice original touch. Nice. When you hear about these kind of Orange County haunted walking tours, this place comes up big. Really? Well, for a couple of reasons. One in particular, back in the 20s, a woman supposedly a wife uh, found her husband here cheating with another lover and kills him. And that supposedly, in a lot of the restaurants today, uh, people claim to to feel the murderous spirit, you know, still here. There was a suicide here in 1978. A well-known railroad worker killed himself here, and his spirit supposedly lingers as well. But my favorite bit of history here, it goes back to a, a previous forgotten OC that we did in Brea, the, the very famous Babe Ruth, Walter Johnson baseball game. This has got place. a happy ending, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is fine. I mean, for baseball fans, it's, it's really fine. It's 1924, Halloween Day, that game takes place not too far from here in Brea. But this is where, by, by several accounts, Babe Ruth spent the night before the game. So he would have gone to the game from here. Okay. And he would have been one of the notable people that stayed in this hotel, which I think is kind of a, you know, a great piece of Orange County history. Just having Babe Ruth here in Orange County, but knowing that he would have stayed in one of these rooms here, I think makes it, uh, by my count anyhow, a very, very uh, significant Orange County landmark. I'm so glad that it actually still looks the way it's, I mean, if you didn't know that those were offices or they, it still looks like little hotel rooms. Yeah, and there. I mean, you, you will have, I will, well, at this point in our chatting, you may be cutting away to some old images and right. things. You'll see they've changed it a little bit. It wasn't, uh, it was more open down there at the front. But they enclosed it in the 60s once they kind of refurbished it just but you know at least they kept it alive they kept it here even though it's not a hotel anymore structurally you really do get a sense of what it was like 90 years ago here in fullerton it was pretty what i like about it it's like this oasis you're off the main off of harbor but mm -hmm. it's essentially silent back here you're totally encapsulated by historic buildings it's very monastic feeling i mean if we were here in the 1940s or 30s this would have been just the perfect spot. The twinkling lights and the Mission Style Hotel. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous building that, again, is, is a total forgotten OC project because it's no longer a hotel, but it's still you can still feel it. You know, there's definitely a presence here, I think, of the past. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. My pleasure. As always, the coolest stories. 
All right, changing gears just a bit now. Teens are now more likely to die from a drug overdose than they are from a car accident. There's a rising trend among teens to use and abuse prescription drugs. An awareness campaign gets underway in June at the Kaleidoscope Entertainment Center in Mission Viejo. One of the people in attendance will be the producer of the documentary, Overtaken. Here's a quick preview of that film. I was curious. I was very undereducated. I did not know what I was getting myself into. If I could take it all back, I definitely would, because this has brought me to some nasty places that I would never want to be. Out of 15 friends back home, probably five of them are dead, and and the other 10. Um, are still doing exactly what I was doing. Most people can't kick this thing. My son will never have the chance to celebrate his 21st birthday. He'll never have the chance to have a, have a girlfriend. He never had a girlfriend. He'll never have the chance to get married, have kids, and just live life to its fullest like he should be. You can easily block your number and 911, that way you don't get in trouble. But at least call someone, save a life, so that way your friend can live. It can happen to anybody. And by doing it one time, one time, that could be one too many. Welcome now to Real Orange, Jody Barber. We're so glad to have you with us, Jody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, we're going to talk about the the movie in, in just a minute. We'll get back to the documentary in just a second. But let's talk about your personal journey uh, with prescription medication. Tell us what got you involved in in this particular topic. Well, two years ago, I lost my son Jared. He was 19 years old to prescription drugs. He overdosed, and we found him on the sofa. Um, I never spoke to my son about prescription pills. Uh, I talked to him when he was young about drugs, mm -hmm. in particular street drugs. Uh, I talked to him about alcohol, but never did I ever think of having to talk to him about prescription pill abuse. When you talk about prescription medication and prescription pill abuse, are most kids, um, including or excluding your son, getting them from the home they live in? Where are they getting the prescription medication from? Um, not my case. Mm -hmm. uh, the strongest pill in my medicine cabinet was Tylenol. Right. Um, but yes, many are getting it from their own medicine cabinet. So I am an advocate now and I am doing parent nights where I talk to the parents and let them know to please lock up your pills mm -hmm. because they are getting them from there as well as um, other places on the internet. Uh, there's dirty doctors out there that are prescribing to the kids. How can, how can we put a, a, an end or at least slow it down where they're able to get these prescriptions from, from doctors or illegally as they are? What can we do? Well, I think right now uh, educating is one. We need to educate all the kids. We need to educate all the parents. We need to educate the doctors. And we need a database. We need regulations. There's a lot that is involved right now that needs to stop this. Um, we need the political side to help us out here and start regulating what what everybody is getting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's too easy for these kids to get the pills. Yeah. When you talk about overdosing on prescription medication, is there a, a most common prescription that kids find and take? The, um, yes, the, the opiates are what the kids are uh, overdosing on. Um, Vicodin is where they start, mm -hmm. which is also uh, synthetic heroin, and that leads to Oxycontin. The Oxycontin is what a lot of the kids were abusing, and um, they, made, they made it difficult to crush the pill. This is how they're getting a quicker high by crushing the pill okay. and smoking it and they made that difficult to do with the Oxycontin. So now the kids have led to is a pill called Opana. Another name is Oxymorphone. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, 10 times stronger than Oxycontin. It's supposed to be only prescribed for terminal cancer and this is how the kids are dying. They are abusing this pill called Opana. Hmm as well as the deadly combinations. Yeah, yeah, mixing the drugs is the mixing worst. Mixing the drugs, but taking one Opana, you can die from that. When you crush that pill, it's a 12-hour release that becomes an immediate release to the brain. Oh. 
Let's talk about your documentary. We saw a little bit of it. Uh, it's going to be playing at, uh, the, at down in Mission Viejo, as we mentioned. When is that, and how can folks uh, see more of, of, your, of your documentary, Overtaken? Okay, well, Overtaken is shown on YouTube, so mm. you can view it on YouTube okay. as well as purchase copies to have at your home. Mm -hmm. um, the Kaleidoscope is holding an event on June 7th from 6.30 to 8.30. It's an awareness event, okay. but it's also a fun event for teens and young adults to come to. Okay, so you can get uh, more information about the type of prescription drugs as well as, you know, how yes, to avoid. We're gonna have a, exactly. We'll have a guest speaker from Overtaken, mm -hmm. and he'll speak briefly, and we'll have copies of overtaken to purchase mm -hmm. for ten dollars um, we'll have a lot of good information there in helping produce overtaken one last question in your production of it did you learn more while you were making that movie than you knew before or did you bring information to the table oh I learned more when I was <laughs> making the documentary yeah. the document the not excuse me the documentary mm -hmm. consists of several young adults and they're all telling their heartfelt stories so yeah, a lot of good information. A lot of good information. What, what is what is this poster? This is a poster that I put up in store windows uh, about a year and a half ago after my son passed away, and another and another, and I knew it was an epidemic. There's been over 400 uh, fatal overdoses in Orange County in the last four years. So I put this poster up of a few of the Orange County kids who have passed away. Mm -hmm and including my son and I have my phone number. My home number is on this and I get calls every, practically every day. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you. GoKaleidoscope.com is the uh, website to get more information about the event. Thanks a lot. Orange County transportation planners are constantly looking for ways to move drivers through traffic zones in the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. One choke point in Orange County is the 405 freeway between Euclid and the 605. Officials are considering a plan to get rid of carpool lanes on that stretch of road and replace them with toll lanes. Pat Haslam is here now with the rest of the story. Hi, Patrick. Hello, Ann. Hi, Ed. Well, the express lane option is one of three outlined in an environmental impact report and statement, which are now, are now available for public review and comment. It's no secret, the 405 is a virtual parking lot during both the morning and afternoon commutes. Part of it, along with the 22 freeway, are already getting a new lane and HOV connectors. But now several options are being considered to improve the 405 between the 73 and the 605 freeways. We have three other alternatives wherein we add one general purpose lane in each direction. The second one would be we would add two general purpose lanes in each direction. And the third would be to add one general purpose lane and a express facility. 300,000 cars and trucks drive the 405 daily. And that number is expected to increase by up to 30% over the next 25 years. Option three, the plan to add one new lane in each direction plus toll lanes that would replace carpool lanes is getting the most favorable reaction from county transportation planners who will make a final decision this summer. That is the largest number of cars that can travel the quickest on that area. And from our studies and our reports, it appears that the express facility adds the most amount of free space, if you would, which it won't be free by the time it opens, of course. But uh, the other two are not as, uh, uh, don't have as large a numbers on them for the numbers of vehicles that can get through. To complete the environmental process, public input is needed. Uh, we have four hearings scheduled. Uh, one is at, uh, on Monday, June 4th at Orange Coast Student Center, Orange Coast College. Uh, we have Wednesday, June 6th at Westminster Community Facility. Thursday at Rush Park Auditorium. And, and Thursday, June 14th at Fountain Valley Senior Center. The cost of the project, assuming alternative three with the express lane is chosen, would be $1.7 billion. Construction, which will last about four and a half years, is expected to begin in 2014. Very good. All, All right, right, thanks, thanks Patrick. Patrick. You bet. The younger boys of summer are headed into the postseason, and the U.S. water polo team makes a big splash in Newport Beach. No one else but Paul Higgins could cover it all. He joins us now with sports. Hi, Paul. That was very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Great to see you both. Glad to have you good here. See you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And uh, what a great story we just saw just a moment oh. ago. Yeah. Well, news and notes from around town. I, I got to congratulate the Cal State Fullerton uh, baseball team. Of course, Cal State Fullerton, they won the Big West, and now they're going to the big dance. They'll once again get a trip to the NCAA. Uh, 
playoffs and make sure you look for Cal State Fullerton. Well, this is the time of year that the Little League baseball season has taken up a notch and uh, the Tournament of Champions gets underway. Crosstown rival games are certainly played at a higher level as the boys of summer have their sights set on a championship themselves. With that said, we take you out to Mission Viejo for a great contest between the Bulldogs and the Hurricanes. The North Mission Viejo Junior Bulldogs taking on the Rancho Mission Viejo Junior Hurricanes. It was a great night for baseball at BB Field. Chad Crosby rips an RBI base hit. Christian Kovinsky comes around to score, and it would be one to nothing as he slides underneath the tag. And then Kruger comes up, he gets a line shot past second base, and this would drive in a run as well. As in the bottom of the first, it was two to nothing. We move to the bottom of the second, man on first. Mitchell Narasaki gets a base hit up the middle. And then one out later, Elliott rips an RBI single to left. He will go to second on the throw home, and the throw home, safe at the plate. Two batters later, Wyatt Filkin gets an RBI single to left. As the Canes were hot at the plate, the Hurricanes led three to two. Top half of the third, Bulldogs batting. Number nine, Crosby. This ball has eyes on it as it's trouble in center field, falling just off the fielder's glove. Colton Wilson comes up and he will rip a shot in between short and third. And this would keep the inning alive. One batter later, Ryan Shields delivers an RBI hit to right as the game was tied at three apiece. It was a good thought, but aggressive base running was not rewarded at the plate as the runner came home, but he was out. In the top of the fourth, the Bulldogs keep things going with a base hit down the first baseline. That was a great play, and two batters later, Kavinsky delivered a big hit to the gap in center left. The RBI gave the Bulldogs the lead, five to three. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Bulldogs anticipate the steal, and they tag out the runner as he slid into second base. Top of the seventh, Crosby starts the inning with a rip to left field. He would extend it to second base after the ball drops in past the fielder. He would later score on a throwing error to make it 7-5. And then in the bottom half of the seventh, a runner is on when the Bulldogs turn this 4-6-3 double play, and this would be a key play. Next batter, Dave Amon comes up and gets every bit of this pitch as he blasts it over the left field fence. He was definitely excited, and he should be. But going back to that double play, Wilson, the pitcher, will come back and strike out the next batter to end the game. The North Junior Bulldogs hold on to win 7-6 over the Rancho Mishmeo Junior Hurricanes. Well, it's hard to believe, but the London Olympic Games are fast approaching, and recently the city of Mission, uh, the city of Newport Beach, pardon me, hosts an exceptional water polo event that is a prelude to what you can expect this summer. In 2008, take you back, Hungary defeated USA 12 to 8 to win the gold medal. Well, those two teams met again in front of an overflowing crowd at Newport Harbor High School in what could be a preview to the gold medal game in London this summer. We take you to Newport Beach, California, on a perfect day for water polo and it is the road to the Olympics as mentioned Hungary is one of the best teams in the world and they had their hands full with Team USA. Team USA was primed and ready to play coming off an 8-7 loss to Croatia the day before and USA did not want to disappoint their fans on hand. Well the game will get underway in just a second the sprint to the ball USA is in the white caps and they played very well. USA led early one to nothing but Hungary quickly tied the game with a shot by Thomas Varga. Team USA then countered on the power play with a strike by team captain Tony Azevedo. Azevedo would score a total of six goals on the day. Well, the scoring continued for Team USA as Team Hutton, as Tim Hutton, pardon me, struck in just in front of the cage. That was a pretty goal there. Well, I'm happy to say that Team USA put on a scoring clinic in this one. They converted on their first six chances, putting up a total of 12 goals, including this pretty shot by Azevedo. And great ball movement you'll see in just a moment here. It seemed like uh, every offensive possession, they were really, really playing well. And Peter Valeris hit the back of the net. These guys are great athletes. Second half, Lane Bobian uh, for Team USA split the defender in the second half as he and the scoring continued. 
Head coach Terry Schroeder is uh, very pleased about this outcome of this game. His team, uh, he said, played on all cylinders. All the players played very well, including, there's a good look at Schroeder right there, the blonde hair, great, great Olympic coach for Team USA. The scoring continued for Team USA in the second half, and Hungary did stage a little bit of a comeback. They would come back and score a goal of their own here, and uh, they were down by three, and that's the way it would end. 12 to nine was the final score. You got to make mention, though, their goalkeeper in the cage for Team USA, Merrill Moses, played very well. And, uh, of course, Tony Azevedo, that guy was on fire. The final score in this one was 12 to nine, and we congratulate Team USA on their exceptional win, and we wish them, of course, the best of luck as they get set to go to London for the Olympic Games. And I know that you've been to some Olympic Games. Pretty exciting time. Yeah, it is. That's, that's a tough sport to play. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, <laughs> especially what goes on under the water. Absolutely. You <laughs> got those underwater cameras catch that. It's, we can't talk about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks All very right. much. You got it. Thanks a lot, Paul. Still to come on Real Lauren, a fine selection of animals up for adoption from OC Animal Care. Stick around. Considered one of the greatest novels of the 19th century, Victor Hugo's Les Miserables comes to center stage at the Sagerstrom Hall. You can see Les Miserables June 12th through the 24th. Also in the community calendar, Bosnian Born, that's at the Green Cube Gallery in Laguna Beach through September 1st. Walk United 2012 is at Angel Stadium on June the 9th. Car Wash Fundraiser for Adopted Troops, that's at the Mission Viejo Civic Center on June 9th. Health and Wealth Expo, that's at Union Bank in Westminster on Brookhurst Avenue on June 16th. The Jerry Mandel Swing in the Standards Jazz Band performs at Grant Howland Park in Corona Del Mar on June 10th. The Taggart Family 8th Annual Lemonade Stand will be at the Irvine Spectrum on June 9th. And Before Russia Went Red, Worlds of Art Under the Last Czars on display at Bowers Museum June 23rd. Mad Science presents Slime at the Children's Museum of La Habra on June 16th. And finally, Summer Solstice and Taco Festival, that's at the Muckenthaler Cultural Center on June 24th. Everybody rise to come on. All right. Time now to welcome <laughs> the director of the Orange County Animal Care, Ryan Dreback, who's here with an animal up for adoption. And we're going to tell you about a whole lot more, but nice to have you with us. Let's talk about this beauty first. Oh. Absolutely. This is Shelby, and Shelby is just a gorgeous cat that we've had at the shelter for over a month. Oh. Unbelievably that she, uh, that, uh, unbelievable that she hasn't been adopted yet because uh, she is just a sweetheart of a cat. Um, uh, she's about seven years old, yeah. which is really good. It, you know, if you're looking for a new cat, uh, an adult cat that's already litter box trained, isn't going to wake you up at three o'clock in the morning trying to play with your toes or anything else. Uh, <laughs> yes. A cat like this is, this is just wonderful to get uh, <laughs> if somebody's interested. Uh, and she really is a sweetheart. She's a lap cat, um, definitely loves to be handled um, and, and would make, make a great pet for anybody. She's so fluffy. What yeah. the, kind of guide folks through the process? How are we going to get that Absolutely. cat adopted? Uh, you'll come down to OC Animal Care. We're located in the city of Orange on the city drive across the street from the block. Visit with Shelby and for a very nominal fee to pay for the services provided, uh, you can take Shelby home. She's uh, actually already spayed, so uh, you can take her home the same day you visit with her. She'll have a microchip. Obviously, she's already spayed all of her vaccinations, and uh, and she would be a great pet for anybody. Yeah. We have some photos of some friends of Shelby's that, that need adopting, too. Kind of walk us through and tell us what these are. Absolutely. This first one is Henry, and Henry is a neutered eight-year-old uh, Doxy Beagle mix. And, you know, he's a little bit older, but he has tons of energy. Uh, small breed dog. You can't really tell from the photo, but he is a small dog. Um, great little guy that's available for adoption. Okay. This is Princess. Princess is a purebred Pekingese, uh, just gorgeous. She's spayed. She's about four years old. Um, she obviously would do best in a house where she's got a lap to sit on all day. Yeah, no kidding. And this is Emma Dice, and she's a big dog, but she's young. She's only about a year old. She's spayed and would be great for a family. She loves to play ball, which is fantastic for, for a big dog and, and especially uh, somebody who's got a lot of energy. She's okay, a German this shepherd mix. She is. Uh, okay, yeah. There's Dixie. And this is Dixie. <laughs> Named after my wife, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Dixie's a, a spayed four-year-old calico. Um, she really is a sweet little gal. Um, actually, oddly enough for a cat, this one loves to be brushed, which oh. my cats can't stand being brushed. Okay. Uh, Dixie absolutely loves it. Well, look how shiny you can yes. see. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And then our last one is Suri. Suri, you know, she's a little shy when you first meet her, 
but she really is uh, uh, looking for a forever home and will be best friends with somebody that comes and visits oh, her. Oh, she's so sweet. How many, how, many, how many animals do you have at home? I know, you, I know what you have when you go to work. but I've got three cats and, and one dog right now. Um, and, you know, you can't work at an animal shelter without, uh, you know, them tugging at your heart and wanting to adopt them all. Absolutely. So, so this summer, folks may be looking for a new pet to bring home. Do you have any exotics or any, anybody like that? Well, we did have a big pot belly pig oh. uh, that actually just went home with somebody this last week. So you're a little late. Oh. That but is we do symbolic. get other things like that. People can visit our website, OC Pet Info, see what we have available for mm -hmm. adoption. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting a, a good turnout of people adopting pets? Absolutely, yeah. We, in fact, we have a big event coming up in June. It's our annual pet fair. We're going to have lots of pet vendors, rescue groups, other shelters involved in that event. So we always encourage people to come down, see the selection of animals we have at our shelter. We actually recommend people visit any, any shelter. We've got a, a bunch of great shelters in Orange County, yeah. uh, and, and we really advocate for people adopting shelter pets. On the website, is it just those? that are available at your shelter or the others? Uh, well. Just ours, uh, but actually there's a feature on our website called Pet Match by Email, and you can go online, uh, put in your website an animal that you're interested in, and it'll email you from any shelter in, in Orange County. Right. Oh. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing that beauty to see us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. All right. We'll Thanks. talk to you soon. Thanks, Ryan. All right. That does it for this edition of Real Orange. Thank you for watching. You can watch Real Orange weeknights at 5 and 11.30 p.m. and see rebroadcast of Real Orange on PBS SoCal's digital OC channel, the next generation of PBS.